Hello viewers, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today's study is still on the anthology, Silent Song and Other Stories, with the story in focus being an incident in the park by Major Mohanki. This story, just like many other short stories, deals with the challenges of urbanization and the life in towns, urban centers, and cities, especially in Africa. There has been a tremendous surge in the population of various urban centers, cities, and towns. And uh, for that matter, it has come with certain challenges that tries to dehumanize life in such centers. We will be taking a snapshot at some of the challenges brought out in the story An Incident in the Park. Number one, there is a tremendous environmental degradation in an incident in the park. The sky is hot clear blue and uh, we see not a drop of rain during this August period. The ground is deep, dusty, brown, bare and patched. Again, dried bits of grass stick forlornly out of numerous cracks that have been likened to pleading tongues out of hell screaming for a drop of water. Dry leaves that have been shed by thirsty trees also run rustling in front of light breeze in this dirty brown park. A boathouse is also seen sitting sadly, hunched over the shoulder of the lake with the dirty muddy water lapping at its withdrawn feet. It is imperative to notice the use of uh, simile used together with personification. And in literature, an aspect of style is not just used for the sake of it. It has its relevance and effectiveness. The trees from which the dry leaves fall are seen to be thirsty, given that human characteristic or human trait of being thirsty. Then uh, we also see the drought taking a heavy toll in the park. The personification here highlights the neglect with which the park has been neglected. The various cities and the, uh, the various governments could have the economic resources to ensure that parks, which are basically and apparently the standards with which cities are being uh, measured the world over some of the parameters which make a city a city. It is very interesting to see through the use of personification and similes the kind of neglect that has been given to the park. The environmental degradation here has been given the chance to have a field day 
without any sort of human intervention to ensure that the park remains in its state. This is also seen from the kind of management that the fish pond has been given. The fish, fish pond has been dangerously overgrown with weeds. The yellow, blue and purple water lilies struggles with colorless weeds. Through contrast, we are told that the fish pond that had a blue and green surface sometimes back now has an ugly mishmash of pond weeds where pond flowers had stuck out their buds in colorful fingers and proclaimed order now there is a riot of unclassifiable intruders with bastard flowers the park soil of the northern part of the fish pond has also collapsed and reclaimed it, thereby forcing the murky brown water and the bewildered fish back to the deeper further end. It is quite ironical that a certain loafer who sits on a board that has been inscribed, do not fish, do not feed fish by order. That's the opposite of that. Tossing debris, tossing pieces of grass and rocks into the water and sniggering at that. Nobody comes to him, asks him why he is doing that. So there is a kind of environmental degradation in this park that has been aided by the neglect occasioned by relevant authorities. Again, there is uh, noise pollution in the city that has been brought out in an incident in the park. The noise pollution comes out in the form of uh, use of onomatopoeic words. The story mentions that cars braid on the highway, brakes shrieked, ambulances wailed away, raising against death, trains whistled urgently. The onomatopoeic words here, braid, shrieked, wailed, whistle, bring out the chaotic effects of noise. And by the way, there is the use of onomatopoeia with the subtle infusion of personification because we know that it is the donkeys who bray, humans shriek, uh, humans wail, especially in times of death, and humans also whistle. So when cars are made to bray, brakes are made to shriek, ambulances are made to wail, trains are made to whistle, it creates a certain picture of chaos that come as a result of noise pollution in this city that represents many other cities across Africa. Viewers, as we continue, allow me to thank you very much for your support. Let me thank you for the subscriptions, the likes, comments, shares, and recommendations. To those who are visiting us for the first time, allow me to ask you to take a second or two and click onto that subscribe button so that anytime YouTube will notify you on the videos that we produce. The third challenge of the various cities is uh, 
what I tend to call the ambivalence of the town life. The town life is quite ambivalent that while some people enjoy the bounty of the town or the city life, others are stuck to their lives. And sometimes it's quite interesting that those who do not get to enjoy the bounties and the opportunities of city life, to which many run to various urban centers and run to cities in search of opportunities. Sometimes it is their own making that the people to blame for not taking part or not having a share in what the town has to offer. There are uh, workers who are working in ministerial offices and they have to pass through the park and go to the city. And we we'll see them uh, crossing the highway and the waves of the people disintegrating into individuals and dispersing. Some rush to meet roasting places down river road. Others join queues at the numerous fish and chips joints where they dutifully swallow soggy fried chips with watered down ketchup. And uh, they seem to be having it major in life, the living lives, the kind of meals that they are taking. But let us look at uh, this contrast. They are contrasted to the park loungers, who from the park grounds, if one lays facing east, then they are confronted with frowning faces of parliament and uh, city hall clocks. Every hour on the dot, the two clocks strike together, regulating the tired city spells and reminding the park loungers just how many hours they have been wasting lying idle, pleading with them using their accusing fingers, the accusing fingers of the clocks, plead with them to get up and be useful. Mostly the pleas go unheeded. Many shook their heads defiantly at the insistent clocks, cast them loudly, and facing the other way, go back to sleep. This is kind of uh, a determined effort by the park loungers to remain complacent and not to seek out a way through which they can earn a living. And uh, that is why it, now, it, it does not come as a surprise when we see the two ice cream sellers, the ice cream men, fail to earn even a cent from their sale of the ice cream bars. Today, like yesterday and the day before, not one bar of the ice cream was bought by the hungry ones. And uh, this underscores the lack of strategy by the ice cream man. The loafer who throws debris, who throws stones and soil at the fish in the fish pond, later on confesses that the ice cream man 
insistently ringing his bell to no avail is not a strategist that he ought to have gone and sold the ice cream to children and that he is not going to make a kill by selling the ice cream in the park but he keeps on going over and over again to do the same thing with the same results which of course is not pleasant there is also kind of uh, the stationary life the stationary life at the park every day at the fish pond there is a group of people who are watching the same group of people who are paddling hired boats every day the same watchers watched the same rowers move their boats over the lake under the bridges every day unconsciously reacting to the magazine that spectating is the next best thing to participate in so this kind of stationary life with no touch of dynamism in the way the park launchers do their thing could be what lead them not to make a leap in their economic statuses so that there is a kind of ambivalence while some people work in ministerial offices and their money gets to eat uh, decent meals then the park loungers have to contend with sleeping or uh, lounging under the shade of uh, thirsty trees and shrubs at the park another thing that comes about in the town that has also been exposed to us in the town is the overpopulation and over congestion of people in the town there is a tremendous use of uh, metaphors and uh, this explains when people move from the ministerial offices and they pass through the park and uh, the metaphor that has been used here is that of a dam the movement of the people is compared to a dam bursting a flood of hungry office workers gush out of the ministerial offices in most cases it could be water or maybe something liquid that gushes out of maybe a reservoir so the idea of people gushing is a metaphorical way of emphasizing the great population that is coming out of the ministerial offices and they are in a furiously ravenous torrent as they sweep down the hill and they come in armies still emphasizing the big crowd of people who are moving from the ministerial offices time had once again thrown the floodgates open they swarmed down the hill into the park past the fast ice cream mound round the lakes to the eastern exit so those four are some of the aspects of the town life the aspects of the city life number 1 there is environmental degradation and sheer neglect of the park then we have the over congestion of people over population then there is this ambivalence of town life while others have it all others are complacent and do not do anything to change their standing and then there is the noise pollution
Thank you very much for your time. Until next time.